Japan has earned a pretty unique reputation from all around the world. Many consider this country one of the best places to live in Asia, known for its culture, technological advancements, stunning natural beauty, and most of all, the values and beliefs of its people. However, Japan has also earned a reputation for being one of the weirdest, most bizarre countries in the world. With that being said, here are some school rules and traditions in the country that emphasize this duality. From makeup to part-time job policies, here are 20 Japanese school rules you won't believe actually exist. Number 20. No makeup allowed. In most schools in the United States, light makeup is usually allowed. It's normal to see high schoolers retouching their light foundations, lip gloss, and even lipsticks. But in Japan, where the culture is more conservative than the generally liberated West, most schools forbid students to use even the slightest bit of makeup on their faces. However, there's another reason for this policy. The primary reason behind this is the emphasis on uniformity and modesty in Japanese schools. The education system in Japan places great importance on discipline, harmony, and unity among students. Uniforms play a significant role in fostering a sense of equality and minimizing school disparities among students. In line with this philosophy, many schools discourage or outright prohibit students from wearing makeup. The rationale behind this rule is to ensure that students present themselves in a standardized, natural manner, free from distractions or potential conflicts arising from differences in appearance. But of course, there are also several institutions in Japan, mainly those that cater to international and international students, that allow the application of light makeup. So if you're someone who couldn't survive without makeup in high school, you're lucky that you didn't study in Japan. Number 19. No bleached or permed hair. Since no makeup is allowed, you would think Japanese students had more freedom regarding their hairstyles, right? Well, that's wrong. If you're one of the students who decided to have a complete transformation over summer break, one of the things you might have done was to get a tan, work out, revamp your entire wardrobe, or perhaps change your hair by getting a perm or bleaching it. And while I know that most of us probably regretted our decision to try and have a glow up in the span of a few weeks, you couldn't have done it if you were enrolled in a Japanese high school. After all, you would have most likely been kicked out if you came to school with bleached or permed hair. Many Japanese high schools have established strict guidelines regarding hair color and style, just as how makeup disrupts uniformity and conformity among students. Differently colored and styled hair does the same. However, you won't believe the lengths school authorities go to just to make sure students comply with this rule. To enforce these regulations, many high schools in Tokyo request certification from students that their hair is real or in its natural state. This means students need to prove that their hair color and texture are not artificially altered through perming or bleaching. This certification requirement has become so common that almost half of Tokyo's high schools have adopted this practice. However, as years pass by, more and more students have begun voicing their opposition to these regulations and have actively challenged this rule. Some argue that these restrictions infringe upon their personal freedom and self-expression. What's your take on this? Do you think high school students should be allowed to bleach and color their hair? Or do you believe this is something they can do once they get out of high school? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Number 18. White undergarments are a must. If you think checking a student's natural hair color is too much, you might be more surprised to learn that some schools forbid students from wearing anything but white underwear. In a recent study conducted by the Nagasaki Prefectural Board of Education, more than half of the 238 high schools and junior high schools examined had white underwear listed as a mandatory part of their dress code. Now that's quite a peculiar requirement, wouldn't you say? As this requirement is in the school handbook, schools have the authority to check what color underwear students are wearing. Some schools have even employed methods like a teacher pulling up bra straps, or female teachers entering the room while girls change for P.E. class to ensure compliance. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a bit too extreme for me. Unsurprisingly, these rules have raised concerns about invading students' privacy and potentially violating their rights. However, not all schools in Japan have this rule, and even among Japanese people, there are differing opinions on whether it goes too far. 
However, the fact that it exists in many schools raises eyebrows and prompts discussions about the boundaries between school regulations and personal privacy. On the one hand, dress codes maintain a certain level of order and discipline within educational institutions. On the other hand, rules that involve inspecting students' underwear seem to push the boundaries of privacy. Recently, however, an institution in the southwestern prefecture of Saga went under fire after teachers of the same gender asked female students to lift their shirts by a couple of centimeters and male students to unbutton their uniforms. After being bombarded by complaints and a possibility of a lawsuit, the school apologized for the alleged undershirt check. Number 17. All students are required to clean. Imagine a five- or six-year-old girl coming home to her parents and recounting her day at school. Instead of talking about reading storybooks or telling how she learned what 2 plus 2 is, she talks about how her teachers made the entire class clean the classroom. Now, in most countries, especially in the West, this scenario would end up pretty badly, with the parents questioning the quality and values of the school and a threat of a lawsuit. But did you know that this is the case in Japan? But it's not really as bad as you think. In Japan, the education system takes a unique approach where values, conduct, and life lessons are prioritized over academic knowledge in the early years of schooling. Children in Japanese schools don't face traditional exams until they reach the age of 10, instead focusing on small tests. Japanese educational systems are founded on the belief that children should first cultivate good manners and develop the character of young learners before they're introduced to rigorous testing and assessments. Rather than solely judging a child's knowledge or academic achievements, Japanese educators emphasize the importance of instilling values and shaping the student's behavior. During these formative years, children are taught essential virtues such as respect for others, kindness towards animals and nature, and the value of generosity, compassion, and empathy. These values form the foundation of their character and guide their interactions with the world around them. Of course, this includes cleaning and picking up after themselves. And it's not as bad as it sounds. Children are simply made to clean up after themselves and pick up any trash around the classroom. However, this responsibility extends to high school, where most institutions don't even employ custodians or janitors. Instead, high school students are responsible for cleaning their classrooms, and they even take turns cleaning the common toilet. What do you think about this curriculum? Are you for it or not at all? Story 16. Separate Indoor and Outdoor Shoes Most schools allow high school students to choose their own footwear. Some schools have several regulations about what students are allowed to wear, but that's about it. But did you know that in Japan, not only do schools decide on a uniform shoe design for their students, but they also often provide two separate shoes for them, one for indoors and one for outdoors? In Japan, students have separate indoor and outdoor shoes, which differs from what many of us are accustomed to. Upon entering most Japanese schools, you'll notice rows and rows of shoe lockers, called getabako in Japanese, neatly lined up at the entrance. So why exactly is this a thing? In Japanese culture, cleanliness and maintaining a pristine environment are highly valued. To ensure that the indoor areas of the school remain clean and free from outdoor dirt, students are required to change from the outdoor shoes to designated indoor shoes once they enter the school building. This practice helps minimize the spread of dirt, germs, and debris, promoting a hygienic learning environment for everyone. After all, not wearing shoes inside homes is already a practice in most Asian countries. Number 15. No substitute teacher. We've all probably experienced being pumped after hearing that the teacher for the next period wouldn't be able to make it to class, only to get disappointed after a substitute teacher marches inside the room, declaring that they'll be filling in. In Japan, this isn't something that happens. In Japan, there's a unique approach when it comes to covering classes in the absence of a regular teacher. Unlike many other countries where substitute teachers step in to fill the void when a teacher is absent, Japan has a different system in place. When a teacher cannot attend class due to illness, professional development, or other reasons, the responsibility of overseeing the class typically falls on the students themselves. Yes, you heard that correctly. Students become responsible for managing the class and continuing with their studies. In other countries, you'd best believe that most classes won't have a single student responsible enough to rally the entire class in self-study. However, 
This practice is rooted in the Japanese value of fostering a sense of self-discipline and independence among students. By entrusting students with the task of running the class, it encourages them to take ownership of their learning and develop skills such as leadership and responsibility. Of course, some students still choose not to study or revise their notes. Some students fool around and nap instead, but they know their boundaries. Number 14. Morning Greetings In most schools worldwide, teachers just walk into class with their material and start their lessons. However, in Japan, students greet their homeroom teachers. It's not just a simple greeting. Instead, the class representative stands up and says, Kiritsu, which means everybody stand to attention, followed by Rei, where students would then bow and say their greeting, and finally, Chakuseki, which signals that it's all right to sit down. The role of the class captain or class leader in initiating the morning greeting is significant. While some teachers act friendly with their students, respect never disappears in their relationship. Through this, important boundaries remain between teachers and their students. Number 13. Sasumada Schools are considered the second home of students. Aside from their houses, students spend most of their lives in the four corners of their classrooms. That's why it's heartbreaking to hear news about students being harmed and even killed in their own schools, a place that's supposed to be safe. Although assailants aren't common in Japanese schools, some institutions in the country have a unique way to protect students from harm, the Sasumada. The Sasumada is a traditional Japanese weapon that dates back to the Edo period. It consists of a long pole and two curved prongs at the end, resembling a trident. Originally used by law enforcement and castle guards, it now protects students from potential predators and harm. The concept behind the Sasumada in school is to provide a non-lethal means of self-defense and restraint. The weapon is stored strategically throughout school buildings, near entrances or designated safe areas. In the event of an intruder or threatening situation, trained staff members can quickly access the Sasumada and use it to immobilize or disarm the individual without causing severe harm. It's still disheartening that students need a means to protect themselves when they go to school. This shouldn't be the case in any part of the world. Number 12. Bukatsudo Bukatsudo, or simply Bukatsu, is an important aspect of Japanese education. Bukatsudo refers to extracurricular activities that are an integral part of the Japanese education system. These activities go beyond the regular academic curriculum and play a significant role in shaping students' experiences and personal development. In Japan, Bukatsudo encompasses a wide range of extracurricular activities that cater to diverse interests and talents. From sports clubs like soccer, basketball, and judo, to cultural clubs like music, tea ceremony, and calligraphy, there's something for everyone. The options are extensive, allowing students to explore their passions and pursue their interests outside of the classroom. Bukatsudo activities are typically organized and supervised by teachers, who serve as advisors or coaches. However, most clubs function through their own council and officers. This allows students to maintain order and regulations among themselves. If you watch anime, then you've probably seen that clubs do a wide range of activities that not only allow students to learn values, but also helps them create fun memories. Number 11. Cram Schools Cram schools are something common not only in Japan, but also in Asia. Also known as Juku, these supplemental institutions play a significant role in students' academic journeys particularly as they prepare for the crucial entrance exams that determine admission to prestigious high schools. Yep, not college or university, high school. Unlike in many other parts of the world where high school admissions are primarily based on academic records or recommendations, Japan has a distinctive system. To gain admission to renowned high schools, students in Japan are typically required to take entrance exams. These exams assess their knowledge, skills, and aptitude in various subjects. For this reason, Many students in Japan attend cram schools to help them excel and ace their exams. However, it's important to note that it's not as hellish as you might think. Number 10. Bowing In Japan, bowing is a fundamental gesture of respect deeply rooted in the country's traditions and etiquette. While it's challenging to pinpoint an exact date where the tradition started, bowing has been a fundamental aspect of Japanese etiquette for centuries. Students are taught the proper way to bow as part of their education on manners and respect for others. It's normal to see students bow not only to their teachers, but also to upper-level students. Generally in the country, bowing is a form of paying respect to people and a deity. 
There are various types of bows, each with unique meanings and levels of formality. For example, the ashaku is an informal bow where a person casually nods their head as a greeting. The saikere is a deep and formal bow reserved for high formal occasions and showing utmost respect. In fact, some people bow and pay their respects even when no one is watching, signifying that people know how to show their respect even behind closed doors. Number 9. Randosero Bags You've probably seen these bags in thrift shops or in online shops. Perhaps you've even seen them in Japanese movies. In Japan, students use these randosero bags, a traditional Japanese backpack made of sturdy leather or synthetic materials. Its distinctive design features a rectangular shape with a firm frame, providing ample space for books, stationery, and it's water-resistant. The bag is often equipped with adjustable straps, a top handle, and multiple compartments for organization. This might look like a cute bag, but it values both aesthetics and functionality. The history of randusero bags can be traced back to the Edo era, when Western reform came to Japan. At that time, students began using leather backpacks inspired by European designs. Over the years, these backpacks evolved into the distinctive randusero bags we see today. These bags effectively distribute the weight of several textbooks and heavy materials students carry. What's more, these bags are incredibly durable. And when I say durable, I mean they're built to last for years. Some even use the randosero bags of their older siblings. I don't know about you, but I'd definitely be happy to use these bags over the trolley bags that were so popular in kindergarten. Number 8. Uniforms are a must. Now this rule isn't that much surprising, however, it's still worth mentioning. In Japan, school uniforms are considered essential, and the vast majority of schools, especially at the high school level, require students to wear uniforms rather than civilian clothing. Uniforms serve multiple purposes in the Japanese education system. It promotes inclusivity and reduces the pressure to conform to specific trends or societal expectations. What's more, uniforms foster a sense of identity and pride in one's school. The distinctive design and colors of school uniforms help students feel connected to their educational institution and develop a sense of belonging. Uniforms also contribute to a disciplined and focused learning environment. By wearing uniforms, Students are mentally prepared for the school day and understand the importance of adhering to rules and regulations. Putting on a uniform can serve as a daily reminder of the responsibilities and expectations associated with being a student. Perhaps it's for these reasons that not only Japanese schools implement uniforms, but most educational institutions in Asia as well. Number 7. School Lunches What did your high school lunch look like? What about the lunch packed by your parents when you were in middle school? For many of us, packed lunch probably looked like pizza, sandwiches, chips, or the reheated dinner from the night before. And while some schools have cafeterias that serve good food, most usually have meager dishes. Meanwhile, Japan values the food that students eat. So much so that in the past, many educational institutions didn't allow students to leave any food on their plates. However, in recent years, many institutions stopped this policy for health and allergy concerns. Also known as kyushoku, these school lunches are more than just a quick bite. They're carefully planned, prepared, and served to ensure students receive a well-balanced and wholesome meal during their busy school day. Now here's another interesting aspect of school lunches in Japan. You see, most schools encourage students themselves to participate in serving and distributing the food. Every day, a new student gets assigned to lunch duty. While this might sound nothing but an inconvenience, it's a pretty effective way for students to learn how to handle tasks and responsibilities given to them. Number 6. Parents rarely bring their kids to school. The idea of letting your kid walk from your house to the school sounds crazy, especially if said kid is only 10 to 12 years old. But in Japan, this is something normal. It's not uncommon for kids to take the train or walk to school all by themselves. You see, Japan has a reputation for being one of the safest places in the world, with low crime rates and a strong sense of community. This creates an environment where parents feel comfortable allowing their kids to navigate public transportation or walk to school alone. What's more, Japan has a well-developed transportation system that plays a crucial role in ensuring the safety of young commuters. Trains and buses are known for their punctuality, reliability, and extensive coverage. Stations and routes are carefully designed with safety in mind, featuring clear signage, well-lit areas, and dedicated spaces for children. 
But perhaps the most important thing to note as to why parents can freely allow their kids to go on their own is the fact that most Japanese citizens inherently know how to help children. Children are always the priority in Japan. Even the government ensures pedestrians, infrastructures, and public utilities are safe for these kids. Now, of course, some places in Japan are exceptions, but in most communities, the environment is incredibly safe. Number 5. Punctuality is upheld at all times. Punctuality is valued in schools and almost every institution in Japan. From students to workers and even public transportation, the Japanese take punctuality seriously. In Japan, punctuality is deeply ingrained in the culture and highly valued in all aspects of life. Whether it's arriving at school, attending meetings, or catching a train, being on time is considered a sign of respect, professionalism, and reliability. In fact, even the train conductors apologize if their arrival is several minutes late. Naturally, schools have a stringent rule about punctuality. On days with a morning ceremony, the gates are closed at a specific time, and students who come in late aren't allowed to enter the school premises anymore. Number 4. Swimming lessons are required. Physical education in Japan is essential, and students are required to take swimming lessons. In Japan, swimming is considered a vital life skill and a crucial component of physical education. The requirement for swimming lessons in schools stems from a strong emphasis on water safety and the belief that every individual should be equipped with basic swimming skills to ensure their safety and well-being. Now, there's a logical reason why Japanese curriculums include swimming lessons. Japan is an island nation with abundant natural water sources, including rivers, lakes, and coastal areas. By teaching children to swim at a young age, they develop the ability to navigate and enjoy these aquatic environments safely. Should a natural disaster occur, they'd also have better chances of survival. I don't know about you, but this is one of the things Japanese schools mandate that I think should be adopted by schools worldwide. After all, learning how to swim can save someone's life. Number 3. Boy Haircuts Does this haircut look like something you had back when you were in high school? If your answer to that question is yes, you might be surprised to learn that you would have been in trouble if you attended a Japanese school. This haircut, also known as the tube block, is characterized by closely shaved or short sides with longer hair on top. It gained popularity among young adults and teens in recent years. But surprisingly, Japanese schools, especially those in Tokyo, banned this haircut. School institutions argue that this particular haircut, with its distinct shaved sides and longer tops, may be seen as overly casual or unrefined for the school setting. It's seen as untidy and unkempt. But in my opinion, this is still an appropriate haircut for students. But I guess it's different in Japan. I can think of several classmates of mine that had exceptionally outrageous haircuts during high school. And trust me, most of them had haircuts that made them look like they were not in school to learn. But you'd best believe that haircuts don't really define students. I say this, but in the end, we should respect the culture and beliefs of Japanese institutions. It's also worth noting that in recent years, more and more schools are getting more liberated, letting students express themselves in ways that don't significantly disrupt or affect their academic performance. Number 2. No tights, even in winter. One of the things female students from around the world envy about Japanese schools are their uniforms. Most schools in the country, both public and private, have uniforms consisting of a skirt, a blazer, a tie, and an undershirt. Of course, this might be the same for uniforms in other Asian, Western, or European countries, but pop culture and anime made Japanese school uniforms look more appealing. However, there's one rule that many people, including locals, find strange. Girls aren't allowed to wear tights in school, even if they have incredibly short skirts. While the rule may seem strict, it's worth noting that schools often provide alternative options for leg coverings. For example, female students may be allowed to wear knee-high socks, leg warmers, or other approved alternatives that align with the school's dress code regulations. But of course, it's still incredibly strange that tights aren't allowed. I mean, is there any particular reason? Many locals share the same opinion about banning tights. It's pointless. Many can't comprehend why some schools are so keen on female students keeping their legs exposed despite the freezing weather during the winter. Some argue that allowing tights might encourage students to wear wild and distracting patterns that might not be appropriate for an educational institution. 
Others claim that tights prevent students from being too relaxed and losing focus on class discussions. In recent years, female students have been protesting against this rule. However, many schools still have it in place. Number 1. No part-time jobs Most students in the United States take up part-time jobs once they reach high school. Sometimes even students from well-off families get a summer job not only for the extra money but also for the experience. While this practice is encouraged in most countries in the world as well, most Japanese schools have a different belief. In Japan, many schools believe that students should prioritize their studies and extracurricular activities without the added burden of a part-time job. They emphasize the importance of dedicating time and energy to academics to ensure students can achieve their full potential. From the perspective of these schools, part-time work can potentially distract students from their primary responsibilities and hinder their academic progress. While some students may argue that having a part-time job can provide valuable life experiences and help develop skills such as time management and responsibility, which I also firmly believe, schools often maintain a strict stance on this matter. They want students to focus solely on their studies and extracurricular commitments, viewing these as crucial steps toward a successful future. As a result of this policy, many students who take on part-time jobs often keep it a secret only confiding in their most trusted friends. They fear being found out by teachers or school authorities who may impose disciplinary actions for violating the school's regulations. Many students only tell their best friends about their part-time jobs, and they see to it that they work somewhere that's far from their schools to avoid getting caught. Do you think any of these rules should become the new norm? Which of these rules you wouldn't mind being adopted into American schools? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.